Hello, I'm Joey, and in just about six minutes, I am going to teach you all you need to know to be able to render your After Effects projects so that you can use them in your video edits. The most common way to render an animation from After Effects is by adding it to the render queue. Excuse me, by adding it to the render queue. Just select Add to Render Queue from the Composition menu, and the active timeline or any comp selected in your project window will appear in the queue. The render queue lets you dial in your settings before actually starting the render. The render settings presets tell After Effects what settings you'd like in terms of render quality and any bells and whistles you've added to your animation like motion blur and frame blending. I'll usually leave this on Best Settings, but if you click on the blue words Best Settings, you can see more options. Unless your render is going to take a very long time and you'd like a low quality version of it in less time for some reason, leave quality on best. By default, After Effects will render your animation at full resolution, even if your comp viewer is set to something different. But you can change this to speed up your render if you're working on a rough cut and need something faster. One gotcha that can trip you up is this group of settings here. If you've enabled motion blur or frame blending for any layers, After Effects will automatically turn on motion blur or frame blending for your comp. While you're working, you may turn it off to speed up RAM preview times, but if you forget to turn it back on, After Effects will automatically turn it on at render time because these options are set to on for checked layers, which overrides your comp settings. Normally, this is what you want, but if you'd rather After Effects render using the current comp settings, just change these settings to current settings. Time span is also really important. By default, After Effects will render your comps from the in and out points you've set, which is called your work area. You can change this to length of comp to make sure your entire sequence is rendered. That's it for render settings. Let's move on to the output module, which tells After Effects what type of file to render and what compression settings should be used. After Effects ships with some commonly used presets and you can make your own presets if you want by clicking make template and changing the settings to your liking. I'll typically use three different presets. H.264 is the most common delivery format for video on the web, and 40 megabits per second will give you a great quality video. High quality renders a much larger ProRes 422 file, which is a very standard industry codec that is less compressed and that maintains more color information than H.264. Use this setting if you'll be color correcting this render later on, or if you're aiming for the highest quality final result. High quality with alpha renders a ProRes 4444 file, and that format supports transparency also known as an alpha channel. If you're rendering something without a background layer and want to composite it on top of footage, like this, make sure you're using this preset or another one that supports transparency. You can click on the output module presets to bring up a detailed settings dialog if you want to get into the weeds. There, you can choose from even more codecs, compression options, and audio settings, but I usually just use the presets. Finally, click on the file name next to output 2 and choose your save location and file name. Then you hit render and grab a coffee. There are two other really useful ways to render from After Effects, but before I talk about those, I want to tell you about a free course we offer at School of Motion called The Path to MoGraph. If you are at all interested in the world of motion design, if you like animating in After Effects and want to get better at it, check out the course. You'll learn about the process motion designers use to go from concept to design to final render, and you'll see what it's like working with studios and other types of clients in the industry. Check it out, it's totally free, and the link is in the description. You can also render your animations using Adobe Media Encoder. Just choose this option from the composition menu. Doing this adds an extra step as you have to switch between two apps, but there are three advantages to rendering this way. One, Media Encoder has way more format options to render to, and more presets. In addition to standard ones like H.264 and ProRes, you can also render to newer formats like H.265 and WebM, both of which are becoming more and more popular. Two, with Media Encoder, you can queue up renders from different After Effects projects and render them all at once, and you can even queue up Premiere sequences. This might speed things up for you if you're juggling multiple project files and deliveries. Three, the biggest reason to use Media Encoder is that you can start rendering there and immediately go back to work in After Effects if you want to. I don't know why you do this, because rendering is when you drink coffee and check Instagram, but if you're under the gun, knock yourself out. Of course, After Effects will likely run much slower while Media Encoder is rendering, but it's still usable. And one other easy way to render out your After Effects work is to just do it in Premiere. If you're in the middle of an edit and need a graphic, you can create a placeholder for it, like a type layer. Write or control click and select Replace with After Effects Composition. This will open up After Effects so you can animate to your heart's content. And when you're done, instead of rendering, just save your file and head back to Premiere. 
there's now a dynamic link between that After Effects comp and your edit. You can then go to the render menu and render selection to render the animation to the disk cache. But doing it this way risks having Premiere unrender the animation if you change something in the edit that makes it think it needs to re-render that section of your cut. So here's a trick. Control or right click the After Effects clip and select render and replace. A dialog pops up where you can choose your render setting for the clip and I'll generally choose some flavor of ProRes. Then render your clip and now it will act like any other piece of footage in your edit. But if you decide to change something, just control or right click the clip again and choose Restore Unrendered. Now you can choose Edit Original and open up the After Effects sequence for this clip, make your change, and re-render. These are just the three most common ways to render, but there are others that are more powerful, faster, or useful for different formats like GIFs. If you'd like to learn more, subscribe to this channel so we can teach you more After Effects tricks and also bring you deeper into the world of motion design. See you soon.